Okay, what up guys? Um, this is my Raptor menu driven program. This was something that was kind of difficult and um, some of the other kids in my class were having problems with, so uh, I decided to make a YouTube video of it. So first, in menu driven program, um, like you've probably seen using menus before and games and things like that, you usually have like a number and you'll have a number two and a number three and a number four and you'll say different prompts for different things. So like the first one, mine is kind of squished up right here, but it still works. Uh, please enter a menu choice. And then you see from number one, you know, hit number one for seeing a string of numbers or words backwards. Number two for seeing a string of numbers added up. So we have to get their number. So the first thing I did here was that I made a loop. I also made this boolean var variable here, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Raptor has a function that simply is is number. See right there in my uh, loop um, parameter. And is number of what? Of the menu selection. And the menu selection is right here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They get their menu selection from this input right here. Then it tests if it's a number. If it's not a number, they have to do it over again. So that'll separate it um, from being a word. So they can't enter a word here. If they do, they'll have to enter it again. And they'll, they'll get a prompt that says, please enter a number. So then they'll go through it again until it is a number. And then I have to figure out if it's number one or number two. So here's where that Boolean variable comes into play. If it's if the choice is true, and before I had it was false, remember right there it's false. Um, if it's true, the loop stops. If no, it keeps going. So it was false up here, so we're going to go to no, and it's going to keep going. So you can see if it's menu one, if menu selection is equal to one, uh, choice is true, and it goes and does that. And menu selection will be set to one. Um, if it's not, menu selection is equal to 2. If it is 2, then it goes to true. And if it's not any of those, uh, they get an input um, prompt that says, please don't enter a word or non-valid number. And they'll have to enter it again. Now with that input, then you have to validate it over again to see if it is a number. So then you pretty much cut and paste that loop that was up there into here. Um, this is exactly what I did. And then you can validate if it's a number or not. And then from there, uh, it goes back up here, back into the loop. And we'll go back up here. And it goes right up here into back into the loop. And the choice is still going to be false if they still didn't uh, put in the right uh, data. So then it'll go through all this and validate it again. So that's the awesome thing about a loop, is that it pretty much does all the work for you. So let's real quick here, let's play it and see what it does. So let's add it, let's enter some bad input. So let's enter three. And you see my first loop catches that and says please enter a number. So now I have to enter a number. Let's enter five. That's gonna pass that loop. But it's not gonna pass that loop. It didn't it didn't um, meet any of that criteria. It's not one, it's not two. So. so then we have to enter a valid number. Um let's enter a word again. Just to see if we can mess with this program. It caught it. Okay, let's enter a Let's enter 5 again. Now it's a number, and I was going to go back through it again and do the same thing. So it's going to catch it either way. So that's how you'd want to make a menu selection in Raptor. I'm just going to finish up this program by hitting 2. And it's going to go through the rest of my program here. You're probably going to see it in a split nanosecond. Three. Okay. That is my end of my Raptor program. Have fun, guys. Don't work too hard.